क्लास टेन हाउ आर यू ऑल डूइंग दिस इज यू रीज मैम अगेन वेल इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ रिसोर्स क्लासिफिकेशन रिसोर्सेज रिसोर्स प्लानिंग रिसोर्स कंजर्वेशन नाउ लेट एस मूव अड विद वेरी न्यू टॉपिक ऑफ लैंड रिसोर्सेज एंड इट्स यूटिलाइजेशन सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड वॉट यू मीन बाई लैंड द सर्फिस ऑफ द अर्थ इज कॉल्ड लैंड Here I have written the definition. The solid surface of the earth is called land. Now, land helps us to perform vital activities. It also plays its role in sustaining the ecosystem and life on earth. As we all know, that only third, only thirty percent of our earth surface is covered with land. So we can say that our land is limited, right? Let us understand the importance of land. first the very first importance that we live on land it supports plants animals and human beings it supports different economic activities like agriculture transport communication ninety five percent of our basic needs like food clothing shelter are obtained from the land land is limited so as our population is increasing day by day but our land will not increase because our land is fixed our land is limited so we need to utilize the land in a, in a proper judicious manner in a careful manner with a proper planning because land is is of finite magnitude we share the land resources with the past generation and we have to share the land resources with the future generation also right so we need to conserve the land resources we need to utilize the land resources in a judicious way with careful planning with careful planning and judiciously land resources should be utilized so what we can conclude that land is a na important natural resource of utmost importance it is very important to sustain ecosystem and life on earth 95% of our basic needs like food and clothing shelter all are obtained from land and the land will be utilized for different purposes but it should be utilized with careful planning now let us move ahead with india's geographical area india's geographical area you can see here we will try to understand india's geographical area with the help of this pie diagram now india's geographical area comprises of number 1 43% accounts for plain land this is 
percent. That means this is my plain land, which is suitable for cultivation, settlement, industries. 27% accounts for Plato. So this is this is my 27%. That is Plato area. Now the Plato area possesses Rich reserves of minerals, then fossil fuel, 30% accounts for mountains. So this is my Mountains. Thirty percent accounts for mountains, which provides river water, which can be used for generating hydroelectricity, sites for tourism. Forest resources. So, India's geographical area comprises of plain land, which accounts for 43%, mountains, which accounts for 30%, and plateau, which accounts for 27%. Now, let us understand what you mean by land use. Land use means Utilization of land for various purposes. It can be for construction purpose, construction of industries or buildings. can be for agriculture, it can be for mining, it can be for any other purpose, it can be for mining or any other purposes. So we call it as land use. Now the land use, like how we are going to utilize the land depends upon certain Factors. What are the factors on which the land use in India depends upon? Factors that determine the land use are number one, the physical factors. Physical factors means topography. How is the relief? Climate. What type of climatic condition it to have? Climate. Type of soil. Etc. And the other one is a human factor. What are the human factors? It includes population, density, like where the population is high and where the population is low, culture, tradition, technological capabilities, so physical and human are the factors that determine the land use in our country, India. 
Now let us move ahead with land utilization for our country India. In India, land is utilized for the following purposes. Number one, forest. According to the 2017 data, India accounts for 24.39% of forest cover. Now, number two, land not available for cultivation. That means the land which is not utilized for cultivation. A, barren and waste land. Now, what is barren land? Barren land means the land which is not fertile and cannot be put into agricultural use. For example, hilly terrain or desert area. Now, what is a wasteland? Wasteland means a piece of land which is not utilized uh, for agricultural purpose for a long time or we can say a degraded land which can be brought under vegetation cover with appropriate measures. Both wasteland and barren land can be converted into a cultivable land with proper utilization of technology. Example of wasteland, it can be um, eroded valley, waterlogged areas or marshy land or forest degraded lands. Now number B, land put to non-agriculture use. That means the land which is not used for any agriculture, like for construction of building, the land which is used for construction of roads or for factories. Number three, other uncultivated land. That means the land which is not used for cultivation for more than five years, excluding fallow land. We will come to the definition of fallow land in the later part. Now A, permanent pasture and grazing land. The land which is used for grazing of livestock. Number B, land under miscellaneous tree crops and groups. These are the land which are not included in orchards. That means bamboo, bushes or thatching grasses. Those are the lands included into this land under miscellaneous tree crops and groups. And they are not included in net zone area. Number C, Culturable wasteland. Culturable wasteland means a piece of land which was utilized in the past but abundant for certain reasons. A piece of land which is uncultivated for more than five agricultural years. Now coming to the next one, fallow lands. Now fallow land, the first one is current fallow. Now first, what is a fallow land? Fallow land means a piece of land which is not utilized or which is temporary for, for temporary purpose it is not utilized for less than one or one to five years why so that it can regain its soil fertility now under fallow land the first one is current fallow now current fallow means the land which is left uncultivated for less than a year right and what is other than current fallow that means the land which is left uncultivated for one to five years. Obviously, this land can be again reutilized. So that is why we, we may say that this is a piece of land which is just left uncultivated for some time so that it can regain its fertility. Now, why it is not included in other uncultivated land? Because other uncultivated land means the land which is not utilized for cultivation for more than five years or more than that for more longer period. But fallow land means for a temporary purpose, a temporary period, it is not utilized. Like it can be less than one year or between one to five years. Maximum it is five years. The cultural wasteland do have the potential to be utilized for cultivation purpose and in the future it will be utilized for cultivation purpose. Current fallow and other current fallow land which is just temporarily not used but it will be used as soon as the soil regain is fertility. The last one net zone area. Net zone area means total cropped area zone once in an agricultural year. Suppose this is my piece of land 
of 10 hectares where in an agriculture year for once have done the cultivation for paddy. This is called my, this total area is called my net soil area. Now what is cross cropped area? Now in the same piece of land, in the same agricultural year, now this piece of land is utilized for cultivation of wheat. That means that the area will become 20 hectares. Again in the same piece of land, in the same agricultural year, I have done the cultivation for potatoes. So now the area, the land will become 30 hectares. That means how many times the land has been used to cultivate crops in the same agricultural year. That is referred as my gross crop area. That is net sown area. Because it includes the net soil area plus area shown more than once in an agricultural year. That is referred as my gross crop area. So what is the difference between net soil area and gross crop area? Net soil area is a total cropped area sown once in an agriculture year and gross crop means the net soil area plus the area sown more than once in an agricultural year. So I hope so you people understood the, that how the land is utilized for different purposes in India. The forest land not available for cultivation other than uncultivated land. Then we have fallow lands, net zone area, barren and wasteland can be converted into a cultivable land with proper technology. And cultural wasteland, permanent pasture, land under miscellaneous tree crops, these are the land which are not being utilized for cult or cultivated for five years or more than five, more longer years, right? And fallow lands, the one which is not used or not cultivated for less than one year or one to five years. Okay, I hope so you all understood. Let us move ahead with the new topic. Total geographical area of India. Is 3.28 million square kilometer. However, the land use data is only available for 93% of the total geographical area. Why? The reasons being most of the northeastern states of our country except Assam, the land use report has not been done fully. So the north eastern states because Number one, most of the Northeast states except Assam because in most of the northeast states except Assam land use reporting 
has not been done fully. Some parts of Kashmir is occupied by Pakistan, which is also known as Azad Kashmir. A part of Ladakh is occupied by China, known as Aksai Chin. Now, these areas which are occupied by either Pakistan or China, here the land use reporting cannot be done. In fact, China is actually claiming its right over some parts of Arunachal Pradesh and it is claiming that it, it belongs to the South Tibet. So, uh, Kashmir, Ladakh, these are the areas where the land reporting, the land use reporting has not been done fully. That is why we only have the land use data for 93% of the total geographical area. Now, let us have a look at the map of India. There are few areas which are occupied by Pakistan and China and that is why the land use reporting of these areas are not completely done. Well, let us look at this map and try to locate those areas which are under the control of Pakistan and China. This is the Indian Kashmir and in the western part of the Indian Kashmir lies the Pak occupied Kashmir or Azad Kashmir as it is famously known as and it is under the control of Pakistan. This is the region from where many Pakistanis can easily enter our country. This territory is a part of Pakistan occupied Kashmir's Hunza Gilgit, the Saksam Valley region of Raksam and Baltistan which was handed over to China by Pakistan in 1963. This ceded territory is also known as Trans Karakoram Tract. Here the triangular shaped area is a Siachin glacier which is under the control of our country India. This is the region of Aksai Chin which was occupied by China in the year 1962 during the war between India and China. But India claims this region of Aksai Chin as a part of Ladakh. Not only Aksai Chin is claimed by China but also a part of Arunachal Pradesh is claimed by China as a part of South Tibet but this territory is administered by India. Between 1960 to 61 and 2008 and 2009, there were some major changes in the land use pattern. Let us understand those major changes with the help of this two pi diagram, which are already provided in your NCRT. Here in this pi diagram, you will see that the reporting area has been considered as nine as 100%. So we can say that 93% that is the reporting area that we have. That reporting area here is shown as 100%. Now, what we can see in this pie diagram, so we can see the how the lands are used, like for forest, barren and unculturable wasteland, area under non-agriculture use, permanent pasture and grazing land, area under miscellaneous tea crops and groups, then we have culturable wasteland, fallow other than current land, current fallow land and nets on area. We will compare that how the land which was used for Netson area might have reduced or have increased and what are the reasons for the reduction or increase in the percentage of particular area. Let us start. What is the first change that we can notice in the land use pattern between 1960 to 61 and 2008 and 2009? The first change that we can notice is decrease in permanent pasture and 
Grazing land. Here, if you will look at the palm, we will see that in 1960-61, the land, according to the land use category data of 1960-61, the percentage of area which was under the permanent pasture and grazing land was 4.71%, which reduced to 3.38% in 2008 and 2009. Now, why the percentage of area which was under permanent pasture and grazing land decreased because of increasing population in an uncontrollable manner. Now, as the population is increasing, there is a great demand and great need for food production. So, this lands are converted into agricultural land. With the decrease in permanent pasture and grazing land, it raises the question of feeding huge cattle of India. As a result, there is a risk of good quality and optimal quantity of livestock fodder production. Now let us go ahead with the second major change in the land use pattern. Now the second change that we can notice in the land use pattern is in other than and fallow land. Now, most of such lands are utilized or cultivated for one or twice in between, uh, for once or twice during two or three years. Now, most of such lands are cultivated once or twice during two to three years. Why? What is the reason? The reason being of the poor quality of the soil or high cost of production. Now we will see that from the year 1960 to 61 and 2008 to 2009, there is a decrease in other than current fallow land. It was 3.50 in 1960 to 61, which is reduced to 3.37 person which is a good sign that means the land is getting fertile as we remember what is other than current fallow land that means the land which is not cultivated for for one to five years that means now it is reducing that means those lands are again utilized and being cultivated we will also observe that the percentage of barren and culturable west land is reducing. Like it was 12.01% in the year 1960 to 61 and it reduced to 8.61%. That means the effort of west land reclamation and the effort to bring this land into cultivation are partly negative. Now let us see the third major change in the land use pattern. Net zone areas. Now, net zone areas means the total cropped area. Now we will notice that the net zone area has increased from 45.26% to 46.24% which is a good sign that means as I told you that the fallow other than current land has reduced from 1960 to 60 one to 2008 to 2009 that means it has added to net soil area and also the barren and unculturable westland is reducing that also added to our net soil area that is why there is an increase in net soil area now that means if we add the fallow lands that means both fallow other than current and current fallow if we add both then the total net sown area will be 54 percent of the geographical area just if you add 46.24 percent 
and 4.76% along with 3.37%. You will see roundabout we are getting 54%. So if we add the fallow land, because fallow land means the land which are temporarily not used for cultivation, as I explained you. So if we will add this fallow land, then our net zone area will increase. But the problem is the net zone area varies from state to state. Net zone area varies from state to state. It is 80% in the states of Punjab, Haryana, why the percentage of net zone area high in Punjab and Haryana? Because these are the areas or these regions have label land. The climatic conditions are suitable for agriculture. Here the farmers are rich and they can utilize the technology. That means they can they have appropriate means to uh, increase their productivity. Irrigation facilities are available. Whereas it is only 10% in Manipur. Mizoram, Arunachal Pradesh, Andaman Nicobar Islands, now why the percentage of net zone area is so low in this states because these are the regions where we will see that they are, there is rugged topography. That means it is mountainous regions. Most of the population are tribal. That means they practice shifting cultivation still now. Not only this, they are very poor backward. They do not have appropriate means to utilize or to increase agricultural production. They are primitive. They cannot use the technology. That means they lack technology. So what are the reasons for per low percentage of net zone area in these areas? First, rugged topography, mountainous regions. Number two, harsh climatic conditions. Number three, they do not obviously ask for climatic conditions they do not have proper uh, like amount of temperature or amount of rainfall which is required for cultivation of a particular type of crops here we will see the mostly the people are tribal so they are backward they practice shifting cultivation they lack technology they are poor so they cannot afford to buy uh, like modern things which will increase the production of this areas. That is why the net zone area varies from states to states. Now let us see the fourth major change that we can observe. Forest cover. We will see there is increase in forest cover. Now according to the national forest policy, the desired amount of forest cover is 33%. But India has still now not reached to that desired amount of 33%. What is the forest cover of our country? Now let us see the forest cover of our country according to data of 1960 to 61. It's 0.11%, which increased to 22.78%. If you will see the data of 2015, the forest cover was 21.34%. According to the data of 2017, the forest cover was 21.54%. Plus tree cover is included which was 2.85% which comes to 24.39%. So according to 2017 data the forest cover was 24.39%. According to the recent data of 2019 the forest cover is 2167 plus 
tree cover 2.89 comes 24.56 percent so we will see that our forest cover is increasing which is a good sign but we are still now we are feeling to achieve the desired 33 percent now how, why the forest cover is increasing because of the national policies and strict efforts of the government different programs at regional level of planting of trees are practiced in our country like ban mahatutsa we will also see that different national policies are being strictly adapted to conserve and sustainable management of forest now as we can see that there is a huge change in the forest cover which was 22.78 percent in the year 2008 to 2009 which has now increased to 24.56 percent now here you can see this 21.67 percent is a forest cover and 2.89 percent is a tree cover this is not included under the forest cover you should also know that madhya pradesh is a state with the largest forest cover in terms of area so what are the reasons for increase in this forest cover now increase in the forest cover is a result of various national policies aimed at conservation and sustainable management of the forest resources. Our government has tried its effort to plant trees by different programs like we celebrate the program of Ban Mahatutsa where at the regional level, at the school level, the children are uh, encouraged to plant trees which will help in the increase of forest cover of our country. Forests are very essential because the livelihoods of the people who are living in the fringes of the forest are dependent on the forest and to maintain ecological balance we require forests. So I hope so you all understood that how the land use pattern changed between 1960 to 61 and 2008 and 2009. So in this video, we try to understand the land resources, the importance of land resources, its utilization and how the land use pattern changed between 1960 and 2008 and 2009. We will move ahead to the next part of this chapter in the very next video. Till then, just go through the lines go through your NCRT, go in between the lines. If you have any problem, do comment in the section below. If you like my video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. For the time being, I'm signing off. Thank you.